So hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm really happy and excited to be here today. So my Bluetooth series has gone really, really well and I'm very thankful for all your support, all the likes, all the subscribes and all the attention it's got. And I've noticed that probably the biggest request from that series is that you guys requested, how do you actually write data to a BLA peripheral? And today I'm pleased to announce that we're actually gonna deal with that topic today. So, um, in order to do this, we have actually two devices that we're working with today. Um, this device here is the React Native device. This is the BLE client. And this is sort of a continuation of the project that we were doing with the heart rate monitor. I just adapted it a little bit to send and receive Pokemon instead of, of course, keeping track of a heart rate. The other device I have here is a BLE advertiser. This is um, basically an iPhone app that has been programmed to simulate a peripheral like um, this one, if you remember our heart rate monitor. So um, this app at the moment, unfortunately is not in React Native, it's in Swift. But what I will do is I will put it on GitHub. So if you want to follow along with the tutorial, you can use this app. Uh, what I'm gonna try to do in the future is work towards figuring out a solution uh, that can work for Android as well. But for now, unfortunately, um, the peripherals will only work in iOS. However, the client works on both platforms and that's what we're gonna be using today. Okay, so to start, and I know it's a little bit boring, but we're gonna go through a presentation that's gonna actually explain to you how data transfer works from the client to the advertiser. It's actually the code you write is not all that complicated, but getting your head around the mental model of what happens when you transfer data, it is uh, somewhat complicated. So we do need to go through that and I do need to show you. But after the presentation, I promise you I'll write all the code and I'm gonna show you how exactly everything works. So uh, please like and subscribe guys and let's get started. Okay, so let's get started talking about the data transfer between the devices using BLE. So the question a lot of you guys probably have already is, can't we just use JSON? I mean, we send it over the air everywhere else in web development, right? And let's say we have a JSON pretty simple, just like this with like name, address, status, trainer. And unfortunately, uh, makes it so that we can't use um, JSON at all. The reason is because we only have 27 bytes uh, that we can use for data transfer. So now that we've established that basic JSON is too big for our use case, let's quickly talk about why. So here's a really simple case where we just have name is a really short key and Abra is a very short Pokemon. So already we basically consumed eight out of our 27 bytes. And if we wanna work with six Pokemon, uh, of course it's even something simple like this would take up all that information. Uh, if you have a name like Alakazam or something, it's quite long and it's going to take up a huge amount of our amount of data. So the question is then, there must be some kind of more compact data structure, right? And today we're going to be using the integer. And using the integer is probably going to seem strange to a lot of you, but it's actually not that weird. So at the end of the day, everything in computer is just a string of bits the ones and zeros, right? So as long as we have control over those ones and zeros, we can actually just use it as a data structure like anything else. So what we do need to do though, is we actually have to agree between the advertiser and the client, how we're actually gonna encode this data on both sides so they can both understand it. And our encoding is gonna work like this. So instead of sending the name of the Pokemon, we're gonna send the index of the Pokemon that will always fit into one byte. So 151 can always be represented by eight bits. And the same thing is also true for the number one Pokemon. What we're gonna do is we're gonna prefix that bit string with the state of the Pokemon. So 01 is gonna represent the trainer and 10 is gonna represent PC storage. 01, of course, being the number one in decimal and 10, of course, being the number two in decimal. So here's an example of what a binary encoding would look like. So Mewtwo's currently with the trainer, so we know we have to prefix with 01. And Mewtwo has this Pokemon number. The binary representation is therefore an 01 in front of this number. 
Now let's say Abra is in the PC, so he has a status of 1-0. And Abra is a Pokemon with this index, so what we're going to do is we shift Abra ahead of Mewtwo, and now we have both Pokemon in the same integer. Pretty cool, right? So let's say we use this simplified example where we don't have six Pokemon, but we have three. How would something like this work if we wanted to grab Abra, right? Because we need to grab Abra and we need to put Abra into a format that React understands. So uh, we can do this using bit shifting and Boolean logic. Something important to remember here is that anything anded with one will just return itself. So one, one, one and one is equal to one, one and zero is equal to zero. Okay, another useful tool when we're doing something like this is called a bit mask. So we take advantage of the fact that several ones string together can be ended with another number and it will give us back the original value. So here's an example of this. So we know Abra is the first 10 bits of the integer. So we end Abra with the first 10 bits and we get back the value of Abra on the far left there. So we're almost done, but not quite. We need to shift Abra into a place we can use at the beginning of the integer, which is what we've done here. And then the last thing we have to do is mask out the state as well by repeating this process. And you can just do this over and over and over again to get every Pokemon and every state for every Pokemon. Okay, so that's all the theory we needed to get to. And let's uh, jump into the coding, guys. Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to quickly kind of go over the boilerplate here that we have. Um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to uh, for this and on github you can find the boilerplate in starter and you can find the final result in the main branch uh, first thing i want to quickly note is that we are on react native 70 with hermes enabled this is really important because this allows us to use the big integer and the big integer is what allows us to communicate with ble in a really effective way uh, you need to be on react native 70 for this and it won't work on earlier versions of react native okay um, with other things in our boilerplate, I realized this video was already kind of quite long, so I did all of the UI layout for us just the same way as I did it with the heart rate monitor. Uh, basically, it just has these nice um, automatic animations from reanimated uh, layout animations, I believe they're called. And when we uncomment exchange Pokemon, it'll actually do the exchange. Another thing that I'm doing here is I'm assuming that you've done the first uh, three parts. So the first part for learning how to scan, the second part for learning how to connect, and the third part for learning the um, permissions for Android 12. If you haven't done that yet, I recommend that you go back and do those. I don't think this tutorial is going to make much sense if you don't already have that earlier BLE stuff as the base. So if you haven't gone over those videos, please go back and have a look. Uh, but if you have, I'll explain the use BLE hook to you as it's set up so far. Basically, I just have our Pokemon model and the different states we can be in, whether it be PC or trainer. I also have our starting party here, so the Pokemon that are in our inventory initially. Other than that, uh, we have the same scanning, uh, check for duplicate, request permissions, everything that we had exactly from the heart rate tut monitor tutorial. Uh, the only thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to set up our own um, method for streaming the data but all of our methods that we're gonna create will go under this line. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a method for encoding our exchange request. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take in all the Pokemon that we wanna exchange, and then we're gonna send them across. We're gonna start with some state uh, that includes the raw Pokemon and the bite array offset. And what we're gonna do is we're going to put it into the array and shift it slowly to the left as we add each individual Pokemon. Um, we use the value of, by the way, in order to get the actual value from the big int. Um, here's our shifting on the opcode and the Pokemon index. Of course, for the Pokemon code, it goes much further than the opcode. Finally, we or the opcode with the Pokemon code to create the full value of the integer that we want. And then we or that with the raw data so that it concatenates it to the longer bit string that we're gonna send across the, um, to the other device. Okay, so next we're going to create a method called exchange Pokemon, which is going to take in our device, uh, the index of the Pokemon we want to change, and the operation. Uh, we're going to concatenate our party with the Pokemon and Bill's PC. 
We're then going to sort the Pokemon in ascending order based on their index. That's pretty easy to do. Uh, we've all done this before a million times. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for the target index. So we're going to say wherever the um, Pokemon's index value matches the index we passed in, we want to return that. Finally, what we want to do is change the opcode to be the opcode that gets passed into Exchange Pokemon. Lastly, we're going to encode our exchange request. We're going to clear our error if there are any errors. We're going to log any errors that come in. And finally, we're going to send off the data using right characteristic for a response. This is very easy. Similar to how we subscribe, we can pretty much use all the same values. We just have one X parameter at the end, and that parameter is the value of the request. So I'm now going to just add this to our interface, and then we're going to try the method out. Oh, and I gotta add a comma here. Okay. Um, so we should be able to uncomment this and I'm going to quickly compile and then we're going to try things out. Okay, so here we are connected and we can send Pokemon across. We just can't get anything back yet. Okay, so uh, let's write the code to actually allow us to get Pokemon back. So first things first, we need our method for extracting the bit. So basically what this is going to do is just like in the presentation, we're going to create our bit mask. We're going to use it to isolate the bits that we need to get back. And then we're going to shift them um, into the, well, right now we're just going to get the bits back. And then later on, we're going to shift them into where they need to be. So this is just grabbing the bits. So we're just going to end our mask with the target value that came in. Next thing we're going to do is deserialize the data meaning that whatever raw bytes come in, we're gonna turn them back into Pokemon objects. So um, we have our Pokemon index length, which is eight, which is eight bytes, opcode length two, which is two bytes. And we're going to convert our data into a big int because that's exactly what it is that came across. And 60 is the max value of I because there are six Pokemon of 10 bytes each um, with their length. So here, all we're doing is we're extracting the bits and then we're shifting them uh, to the right, the number of places they need to go in order to make it an intelligible number. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to push all of these Pokemon into our Pokemon array and then increment by 10 so we can get the next one and return the Pokemon. So last thing we're going to do is we need a listener function to do something when we're subscribed. This is similar to when we used to get the heart rate before. And when we get the heart rate, we do something with it. Uh, we're doing the same thing here with a response from the peripheral. So um, we're getting the raw data and converting it back. We're then deserializing the data. Uh, here we check if there's an error and we'll set it in the state if there is. Otherwise, we're going to filter the Pokemon that came back for the Pokemon that are in the um, not in the PC. And then we're going to filter for the Pokemon that are in the PC. Finally, we're going to set the state with um, these different Pokemon so that they can be displayed. I'm going to quickly add this to our start streaming data. Oh, I'm going to fix my typo. And now I'm gonna uncomment this method back in our UI code. Okay, so let's try it out. So we're gonna to connect to the device. And there we go. We're able to send Pokemon back and forth um, from one device to the next using Bluetooth Low Energy. Pretty cool, right? So thanks for coming guys, and um, I'll see you next time.